Hi folks, welcome back. It's finished. Oh, uh, I know this may look strange, but it's all in an effort to give you guys better sound quality. You see, I spend an ungodly amount of time editing, especially when you use two cameras. So I've got one microphone going to one camera, one microphone going to the other. They're both identical cameras, so I hope the sound's pretty much the same. And, well, that's all I got to say about that. The Kingway is finished. I finished all the little fiddly bits. And this is going to kind of be the introduction to the machining the final parts that I had to make. The tray for the really expensive vials. This was finished up in one of the videos. And there's a playlist up here for all the little things I went through. This is the, the washer that I made to slide this ball on. And the purpose of this is so that it evens out this surface measurement. Instead of having just a little ball that could drop into something, this widens that up and gives you a, a fairly good estimate of that whole area. And we have the indicator that I made for this little no device. It's got the base here and this goes down and you can put it on anything and measure as you travel. And that's the whole reason for that. Looks nice, doesn't it? This is a Kingway alignment tool. You know, there's some controversies surrounding the actual invention of this. Uh, Richard King's father made him famous, and he designed and did most of this work to bring it to the general public. You can still buy these. They're expensive. There's even been some knockoffs, and a lot of people have made their own as I did. Now, I cheated a little bit. Richard actually gave me this round tube here. And he gave me the cast iron castings for these four-way clamps. But everything else, I rounded up or machined. This is more complicated looking than it seems. This is perfectly ground to where if I turn it over, it's the same as running it on the inside. The inside's been ground. And, and, and it's made for doing stuff like this, riding along a V-way. Uh, you can run it this way or upside down. It's got three different mounting positions here in the base. And this is all relieved. And Richard asked me one time how much I'd charge him to make that. <clears throat> of course, I gave him my stock answer of $4 million. I even give him a 75% discount and he didn't bite. I don't know. Drop if he hung him with a new rope. Well, I haven't needed it in a long time, so it's taken me these all these years to put it together. It's pretty simple. Basically, it's made to measure differences in surfaces. Say I went and leveled this up, made this perfectly level with machine tool levels. And then I slide this down the way by watching these vials up here, which are, I splurged on these. These are 0 0.003 inches per foot, 10 seconds per division on these vials. And once you get everything level, you go ahead and level these vials up, and then you watch them as you move. And then that way it tells you by counting the divisions of movement, how much something's off. You can also use this and measure different things as you go down. Like the top of that way, I can measure and see how it moves. 
it's all for measuring wear. And it does it very well. So then as I'm going down this, I can take a magic marker and I can put, it's low here by five thousandths of an inch or high here. And I can get a good reference of what needs to be done to bring it back, be perfect again. It's a neat tool. It's very handy to have if you do machinery building like this. I appreciate Richard giving me these pieces because this would have taken about another year to make that. You basically need to make it on a cylindrical grinder. And I'm not really sure how I would make it because if you made it round out of a piece of pipe, thick wall pipe, the minute you slid it to make this V joint down here, you're going to make that thing spring open. I finally came to the conclusion if I was going to make this, I would make it out of a piece of solid. I'd go ahead and bore it, and then I'd stress relieve the heck out of it, maybe two times, because there's always a little bit of residual stress. I don't care what people say. It can move a little bit. And then I'd do the finish work on it and probably harden it and then grind it to the final dimensions. Anyway, that's a complicated piece to make, and most people I see just only worry about getting the outside done, which is okay if you don't ever need to measure a V-way. Had some little stickers made so that we wouldn't forget what the divisions were. I kind of like that. Anyway, there it is. It's finished and ready to be put to work. One of the main things it's going to be used for is the 10 e project that I'm getting close to, guys. I'm getting close. To finish up this project, I've got the Gibbs all sitting in the grinding room. They're all going to be ground, and ready to go, and scraped with oil pockets in them. I've got to work on this four foot edge that's over here. It's already ground heat stress relief and ready to be uh, put together and put to use on the table. So this is all coming together. The rest of this video I'm going to show you a few things. I'm trying to not make it four years long. I'm going to show you some pictures of how I designed making this little piece here in CAD. Now, I don't use CAD a lot, but when you want to draw something out, it, it's really nice to have. And uh, I use generic CAD. And, excuse me, I used to use generic CAD. Now I use Bobcad in a 3D. And it, well, you'll see coming up. So the next video after this will be the machining of this, machining and putting together of all this, and that'll finish this project up in videos. Been working on this video for about three weeks now. and You don't want to watch three hours, do you? Three hours with a guy with things on his titties? No, I didn't think so. All right, well, let's go to the Bobcad drawing and then next week we'll put you into the machining. Going to use Bob the lathe and we're going to fire up the 20 inch axles and mainly to make that radius. I don't have anything on any other machine tool that'll hold an inch and a quarter bit. And to make this radius, I used an inch and a quarter ball in mill bit and hooked it up on the lathe and did it that way. So, videos have been a little sparse. I've been cast in another place. So, as soon as we get that done, we'll get back to our normal schedules. Thank you for watching, and let's watch the rest of it. Folks, I'm going to tilt this down. Maybe that would be a little flatter on you. There you go. Folks, I'm going to make something today for the King Way, and it's the last part i got to make. It's a washer that fits underneath the, the inch and a quarter ball end on the ball post, and it allows... You just slide that down a, a flat surface. Well, well, I'll show you as I get drawing. I'm going to use my copy of Bobcat. I think it's version 31. 
this is the fastest, easy way of me making something to show you what we're going to do. So first off, we're going to do this in 3D, so I need a cylinder. And I'm going to make my cylinder an inch and a half wide, because that's the size of my material, which 0.75 is the radius. And I want it 3 eighths of an inch tall, so that's 0 0.3700. I'm going to have my origin set it all at zero. I hit OK, and then cancel out of that. And then if we go and come up here, you'll see that we've made a flat disc, three-eighths of an inch tall, inch and a half wide, centered on zero, zero. So now I, this surface will slide on the, the, the way that we're measuring, and the ball will actually sit up here. So we need a ball to cut out, and that's going to come into here. Let's start with the radius of my ball, which would be 0 0.625. 625. But now my ball's way down here. It's too low. I want this point here to be above this line of zero. And I don't want it resting right here because if it wears, that ball could drop down and be touching here. So I want to raise it up some. So I need to move my center of my ball upward. And let's go with, uh, let's see, it's 6.25. Let's just go with uh, 0.675 and see what that does. See, that raises it up to where... Uh, it's just kind of cradled in there. It doesn't stick through the bottom. So neat thing about programs like this is you could add and subtract stuff. And that's how I'm going to make that radius. I've got this going. So now I'm going to cancel everything. Now, wait, 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 wait. What did I have done? What have I done? I've gotten rid of everything. <sighs> All right. Sphere. 6.2575, there we go, hit OK, then cancel, and that got rid of it, and now I saved my ball. Yeah, yeah. see, that's the beauty of CAD. You can go back. Back in the 70s when I had to draw these things by hand, it was a pain in the butt. That is the best thing for CAD is you can do things easily, quickly, and redo them over and over and over. Okay, I'm going to subtract the ball from this. Go in here to my boolean, hit subtract. My main body is this one right here. And then the body that I want to subtract is this sphere. There we go. Show a preview. And that's what I want. So I'm going to hit OK. And then cancel to get out of it so I don't mess up again. And see, that's what it's made me. It's made me a socket that the ball of the Kingway can fit in and then slide along away on this surface. Now, to make this easier, I don't need all this stuff in the middle. All I need is a lip along the side. So let's get rid of all that middle. How are we going to do that? Well, I think the easiest way is go back into 3D and uh, let's make a cylinder. I'm going to make the cylinder radius, so say, say 0.400. And I'm going to just make it long so it's easy. We'll make it two inches. And now we need to lower it through there so we can subtract it. So let's make this minus 0.50 just for the heck of it. See how I got it sticking through there? Now, if I go back and subtract that, and I'll cancel it. I did it again. Dad, gum it, Don. This has got to be your fault. I got the ball. Got that. We're okay there. Just cylinder. 0 0.42 minus 5. Hit OK. Now cancel. And that stays. Then Boolean. Subtract. Main body is still going to be the washer. The secondary body is going to be the cone. Show preview. That's what we want. And we're going to hit OK. Now, hopefully, if I swing it around. Ah, I got a hole. 
So now I only have to really mill into this part right here. And if that ever wears, my ball will still be above. You have a long way to go, and this just makes it a lot easier. So that's what we're going to be making. My problem is I don't have a tool to make that easily. So I'll show you how I got around that. Try it. 